It's a common task, trying to find out the systems that are alive on your IP network. Quite often, the computers already know, and they can communicate with each other, and there's no problems. But we as humans are not privy to that information unless we request it. So this video demonstrates how to request the IP addresses of hosts on our network the IP addresses of hosts that are alive. And I'm going to demonstrate this using several different tools. We'll start with the Nmap tool, which is my go-to tool. We'll also use the IP nay command, as well as fping and arp. And then we'll show a little bit about for and while loops. For these demonstrations, I'm going to be working with three hosts in a virtualized environment. I have a Debian client, a Debian server, and a gateway. So let's get into Nmap first. And I use this tool all the time. If you don't have it on your system, you can install it. So we'll do a sudo apt install nmap dash y. Replace your package manager in there with whatever you're using, DNF, yum, pacman, etc. But I'm on Debian, so it's apt. And we'll press enter to install nmap. It's open source and it's free. And it's super cool. As I say, I use it all the time. So the first thing we can do is we can scan the entire network. Well, what is the network that we're working on? If we take a look here, we'll see that the IP address of this Debian client that I'm working at is 10.0.2.52, okay? So the network, if we look here, we see a slash 24 subnet mask. So that means triple 255, so that means my IP network is 10.0.2, okay? So that's the network I wanna work with, and that's what I wanna scan. So we'll use the nmap command, and we'll do a dash sn option. And this will allow us to scan multiple hosts. And so we could do something like this. We could do 10.0.2.1 through 255. And we'll press enter and let that scan. Take a look at the results here. We see the scan report is showing us 10.0.2.1. That's my gateway. 10.0.2.51, which is the server. And 10.0.2.52, which is my system that I'm working at right here. So it scanned 255 IP addresses, everything that I wanted it to, this entire range, 1 through 255 and it found three hosts were up. So Nmap is a very, very good tool for doing this type of work. The server is at 10.0.2.51. I could go further and scan that particular IP and see what ports are open there. So for example, I could do an Nmap on 10.0.2.51, press enter, and it tells me the only port that's open is port 22, which is SSH. Okay, so we could possibly SSH into that system. If you're interested in working with Nmap more, I suggest checking out the Nmap website at nmap.org and check out the book that you can get at that site as well. The next tool I wanna to work with is IPNA. The IP command is built into Linux. We just showed it with an IPA that we just did. But IPNA is another command that you can run. It's short for IP neighbor. And so this will show hosts that are available to you as well. Let's take a look. And so the command is IP neighbor, or you could do IPNA or just IPN. And that'll search for hosts that are available on the network. Now it doesn't show .52 because .52 is my system and it expects you to know what system you're working at. But it does show .1, which is the gateway, and .51, which is the server. However, it says that these are stale, meaning we haven't had real connectivity with these systems of late. We can make connectivity. We could say, okay, let's do a ping on 10.0.2.1 and we get replies, control C out of that, and then run that IPN again, and you'll see now that 10.0.2.1 is reachable because we've connected to it as of late. So that is the IP neighbor command, and you can run that on your network to see what is available. And that'll scan everything on the 10.0.2 network by default. 
The next command is fping. Now this is not something that's installed in Linux by default, at least in most distributions, and it's not installed to Debian, so we would have to grab that. So we'll do a sudo apt install fping and press enter, and we'll grab that. Now we have it installed. Let's take a look and see how it works. So first of all, fping can be used to quickly identify if a host is alive on the network. So I could say, do an fping to the server, which is 10.0.2.51. Press enter, and it says that IP address is alive. So it sends out a quick ping to the server, and the result is that it is alive. Or you can check an entire network. We could do something like an fping-g on the network in question. My network is 10.0.2.0 slash 24. And then we'll press enter and it'll show what is alive on that network. Now it's gonna send echoes out to everything on the network. Now that gives a ton of information, but if we scroll back to the beginning, we see that it showed dot one, dot 51 and dot 52 are alive, but it gave us a ton of info after that because it's scanning everything really quickly. If you want to do this and kind of filter this information, we could do that as well. We could do a fping g on the network, but I'm going to change things up a little bit, change it to one reply each, and then we'll also do a two greater than one and we'll also filter for anything that's alive. So when we do this, we should get more specific information and just the information that we want. There we go. So there's some options for working with fping. The next command is ARP, and that stands for Address Resolution Protocol. It resolves between IP addresses and MAC addresses. So the ARP command can also look for hosts on the network, and if they exist, it'll return the corresponding IP and MAC addresses. However, ARP does not exist today on most Linux systems. It's considered somewhat deprecated. So to get it, you have to grab the net tools. So I'm going to do a sudo apt install net tools, which will give us ARP as well as route, netstat, IF config, and a couple other commands. So now we should have the ARP command. However, to run it, you're going to need to use sudo, run it as an administrator. First thing we could do is run an ARP against an IP address that we know. So for example, 10.0.2.1. And when we do so, we see that's the gateway and here is its MAC address. But that's all we get. We don't get any IP resolutions here. So we could go a little bit further. We could do a sudo ARP-E and press enter. That'll show IP addresses as well as MAC addresses for other hosts. You could also do a sudo arp-a. When we do that, we actually get the IP address for the gateway and corresponding MAC once again. So a couple different ways to run that, you could run it against an individual system or with arp-e or arp-a. Now, for any of these commands or programs, if you want to learn more, use the help file or the manual page. So, for example, if you want to learn more about Nmap, you could do a double dash help and get the main help page or do a man on Nmap and that'll bring up the manual page for that. When you're done with the manual page, press Q to quit. So you can do that with any of these commands. Sometimes you don't need double dash help. All you need is dash H. So that'll depend on the command, but definitely check out the help page and the manual page for any of these commands. And so the last thing I wanna show is a little bit about for and while loops. You could make use of for and while loops uh, and you can use them in bash or in another type of shell. But you wanna be careful with these. You wanna be careful because they are actually scripts. So let's show a couple examples. Okay, so I'm working on a different system here and I wanna show a for loop. Now this for loop that I've written is in bash. So I'm gonna enter a bash shell here and paste in the for loop. There we go. And so this shows a for loop for IP in and a sequence of one through 254. That one through 254 will be placed in the variables here. 
and here. And what is it going to do? There's a do statement in here. Well, it's just going to do a ping command, dash C1, meaning one ping, to these IP addresses. On the 10.0.2 network, dollar sign IP means anything between 1 and 254, and it'll go through those sequentially. Now, I actually don't want that because that's not the network I'm on. So I'm going to modify this, and we'll change this to this test network I'm on, 10.42.0. And I'll change that here as well. And so let's run it. Let's take a look. Okay. So it says 10.42.0.1 is up and it's slowly pinging through everything else. So really we don't want to use something like this. If it's really going to slow us down, this could take a lot of time. This bash script could be written a little bit better, but it's slowly finding everything that's available. And you'll find that some of these four scripts you can't get out of with a control C. For a lot of the networking things I'll do in bash or in other Linux shells, um, what I'll usually work in is the while loop instead of the for loop. And let me give an example of that. Here I have a super ping script that I wrote. Do you need the whole script? No, the core of the script is this, a while loop which has a do command, and it's doing the same type of ping, ping-c1, but now we're going by system names as our variable. And it's gonna tell the system whether it's alive or dead. And it's gonna write that information to files, replies.txt or no replies.txt, right? So this is, instead of using a for loop, I found it's a lot easier for me when working in bash to work with while loops. So I wrote this script up here and we can run this script and it's called superping.sh as you can see here. We'll press enter and we'll run it now. And it says test in progress and we'll let that go for a moment. Okay, and test complete it took 15 seconds and it wrote the results to replies.txt and no replies.txt. Let's make that slightly bigger here. And let's take a look at those files. We'll go to replies.txt and it says, okay, these hosts are alive. Well, where did it get this information from? Let's look again at the script. It grabbed that information from this. We're doing a cat command on computers.txt and piping the information of those line by line to the while loop. So the list of computers is here in computers.txt, which I've provided for you in the script, but you can modify this however you like. And I just have some standard things like the local loopback, local host, uh, Google DNS. So some of these will work and some will not. And then based on the results, information will be written to replies.txt. These are the ones that are alive on my network and no replies.txt. These are the ones that are considered dead. There is no bs-computer1 on example.com. That's total BS. This network doesn't exist on my local area network, and this particular IPv6 host does not exist either. So those are considered dead. And this script will keep rewriting to these files. It'll append these files because we have it set that way with double alligators. I also have a terminal-based version, superping-terminal.sh, which will just write the results to the terminal. So you can check out this superping script. It's available as part of a repository for my Linux networking basics and beyond course. And you can grab that from GitHub and I'll have a link to this in the description of the video or in the corresponding article if you go to read that. But remember this, we showed a bunch of different tools, but here's the thing, there's always more than one way to do things in Linux. There's plenty of other methods that I didn't cover here. We didn't even talk about Python, which is super awesome. We didn't mention SED or AWK options, and there's lots of other bash options. You can do things in Linux with bash nine ways from Sunday. So you can get a lot of different options when it comes to bash, or if you like to work with fish or ZSH. For me, when it comes to networking, bash is usually best, but I especially love the Nmap tool. Nmap is a great tool to use to quickly scan networks and it does so much more. So I definitely recommend that you check that out. Thanks for watching and listening. 
And that's it for this video.